Shiva Shalom uh, Mishpacha. This is uh, Rabbi Simon. First of all, we'd like to petition. We'd like to give thanks to, to God and for all the, the good things that He's done for us this week, for the protections, for the blessings, for the abundance that He's given us, and for our well-being, for us, for, for us going out, for our provisions, for our food, clothing, shelter, for everything that He's given us. We, we want to be thankful. We want to be grateful. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Abba, that you provide for all our needs that you provide for our food, clothing and shelter and for, for our illnesses, that you send us healing, that you heal all those that are yours, that you will heal them, that you will keep them steadfast and you will uphold them with your right hand. We bless your holy name. Thank you. Amen. We amen. So, first of all, the situation uh, as it unfolds, uh, the war in Russia, as you know, is still going on. But let me be very, very uh, brief about that and just tell you that Russia has, has actually destroyed a lot of the army of Ukraine. Yes, that is actually true. They've destroyed a lot of their army. And uh, now Ukraine has run out of soldiers. So that's one thing. Second thing, uh, Russia obviously was helped by Iran and, and they, they got the drones from Iran, because Iran is, is a, a pretty good country for producing uh, good drones. You know, they have produced some really good drones, and they, Russia has used those drones and really devastated uh, some Ukrainian territory with those drones. And, uh, and therefore, uh, the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, you know, actually complained about that and, and complained that, Iran is helping Russia and, and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, that, that doesn't go neither here nor there. And Russia is now supporting Iran by supplying Iran with Russian MiG fighters and Russian uh, gunships. So there's a, there's a deal between the two countries. And Russia is supporting that. Also, on the I wrote about uh, the what's happening in the Middle East, I wrote about these things a long time ago, and those things are coming to pass. I mentioned, in, in one of my books, I mentioned the, uh, the Strait of Hamuz. I said the Strait of Hamuz will become a contention point and a hot spot at one point in history, in the future, and it's become a hot spot right now. I think it was uh, a few days ago that American destroyers, ships, were parked in the Strait of Hormuz, and Iran, because Iran controls that region, Iran, that's Iran's territory, by the way. So Iran sent out its boats, gunships, you know, it sent out helicopters to destroy America's uh, so-called destroyer. And they sent a warning to American destroyer that we're coming to destroy if you don't move, move leave this region. And American destroyer quickly and, and wisely left that region. By the way, that, that, that's what happened because they they were they could have destroyed American American ship easily. Yeah, they could have easily destroyed it. So America saved itself from destruction. America is actually I shouldn't say America. I should say American leaders, present leaders in America or present government of America, democratic. By the way, they are leading America into some really nasty nasty areas. Uh, with bad decisions, which could, can cause harm to people, can cause harm to the navy, harm to the army, and other things. Almost there was a uh, there was a ship that was going to be destroyed in the in the Middle East, parked you know outside Israel in the Gulf uh, by Yemen. I mean Yemen were firing missiles at it, and so they just for a few, you know just last few seconds before the missiles would hit. They, you know, fired anti-missile flares, which which deflected the missiles into the sea. It was that close of a call. I personally, if you ask me, I should think that America is actually uh, being host to this war. I think that it's actually not very wise. American ships shouldn't be there. So uh, the war continues. Uh, as I told you last time, the, the reality on the ground is that Gaza... You know the the Hamas operatives, they have freedom fighters as they call themselves. They have heavy heavy infected casualties, and destroyed tanks and heavy equip you know equipment of Israeli army. And at the end, what happened? 
at the end, they are now negotiating peace, uh, negotiating the release of hostages, which Israel couldn't do without that. Israel tried and couldn't. So the government of Benjamin Netanyahu is proved to be a failure, proved to make bad policies, and is now right in the face of the whole world uh, as shown to be corrupt, shown to be uh, in, inept, and out of line with everything that, you know, human values as well. Human values too, out of line, out of touch with human values. And they have obviously made some very, very bad decisions, you know, with Gaza and what's going on over there. So it's a total mess, by the way, total mess. But I think Gaza or the Hamas people delivered a real hard blow to Israel to wake up, wake up people, you know, wake them up. That what you're doing is not exactly right. So I think that at this point, I think that what will happen is there will be there will be some kind of peace, and I think America will get involved with that. Some other countries will get involved with that, and so they maybe they they will find a solution. Right now, it's a total mess. So we'll see where that goes. So there's that, that, that's that. I wanted to give you something that I did. I did a, a lecture, a little talk a while ago, and I wanted to put that over here so you can see what I was talking about. And I'll talk. And it was a, it was a question that came to me about Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse twenty-six. So I'm going to put the answer that I gave back then, and I'll speak about it more so now. So give me a moment. A man who pleases God can get away, but she will catch the sinner. Ecclesiastes 7.26 GNT. Uh, He's asking the question, what do we do if she is this type? Okay, and this is is all allegorical, by the way. You know, I found something more bitter than death. A woman who's like a trap. The love she offers you will catch you like a net. Here it's all, it's all, uh, it's not literal, it's basically allegorical. Let's, let's apply Pashar. And let's apply the, the, uh, so as I was saying that, uh, let's apply both literal and, and phys- in the allegorical. So I found something more bitter like that, more bitter than the woman who is like a trap. In other words, this is talking about a re- religious system, a religious system that you're trapped in, such as Christianity or some other religious, Gentile religion. It's like a trap. It will kill you. It offers you love, but actually that love is poison. So that's basically what this is saying. Ecclesiastes, you know, this this is about about uh, This is about uh, bitter love. In other words, when you're trapped in a religious system and uh, you you can't seem to get out, as some Christians, as you, as you know, some Christians do, they're entrapped in that system. They can't seem to get out, and uh, you know, they feel their own, their families are stuck, like Chuck, and uh, they don't know what to do about it. So that's basically what he's saying. Because he's saying that a man who pleases God can get away, but she will catch the sinner. Who is a sinner? Well, if you like idolatry, if you like idolatry, then of course you will want to be in a Gentile religious system. That's basically what Ecclesiastes in a nutshell is saying. At the, at the Peshat level, is saying that, you know, I found a woman who's like a trap. The love you, the she offers you will catch you like a net. And her arms around you will hold you like a chain. Well, this is, if you applied it literally, this is actually a woman, a goy, a goy woman, a Gentile woman who loves you. Uh, in other words, the love she offers you is physical and she entraps you with physical things. So she's not a hateful woman as such. This is not talking about a hateful woman, a woman who hates you, insults you. No, this woman don't insult you. She actually shows you outwardly love because she wants to entrap you in whatever it is that she follows. Now, if she's worldly, then she wants to entrap you for worldly things. If she's into another religion, then she wants to entrap you into that other religion. So this woman is not our our type of woman who is a, a bad wife. It's not about a bad wife. But ultimately, the result, the consequence of her love that she's offering you is death. That's what Ecclesiastes is saying. So this was the answer that I gave back then. It was, you know, it's the verse that spoke about a woman. A woman, I mean, let me let me pick it up in the Bible so you, you can understand what I'm saying. And it said that I applied my heart to know, to search and seek out wisdom and the reason of things, to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death. The woman whose heart is snares and nets, whose hands are fetters, 
or he who pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be trapped by her. So this was a verse in reference to a woman. By the way, this is not talking about a physical woman. It's not talking about flesh and blood woman. This is symbolic. This is sowed meaning. It's a hidden meaning. It's very symbolic and it's very hidden. And it's talking about the woman being in this case a religious system, which I explained that that religious system is, uh, and I don't want to be offensive to anybody, but the religious system is Christianity. And it's not Christianity in its, you know, Christianity, by the way, if, if any of you know, it was developed in the 4th century onwards, after the, the meeting in Constantine, which is present-day Turkey, after that meeting in 325 CE, that's when Christianity actually officially went out into the whole world as the present Christian system that you see. And that system, the, the book of Ecclesiastes says, is bitter than death. So now you might, you might not agree with that, but that's what Ecclesiastes is saying. That is foolishness and madness. That is binds your hand, binds your feet. And I see that. I see that in a lot of people who are stuck in Christianity. Those people, for for you know, for good or for bad, they unfortunately are not. They are, they are not uh, being blessed. They have many many difficulties. They are living difficult lives, and uh, sadly. Um, you know, un- un- unless you come out of that system, and unless you free yourself, and you f- you know look at the path of Torah, I think it's destruction ahead. So that's basically what that what that's talking about: the system being bad, and and you know binding people and keeping them trapped. And that may be because the present church system is not really a Torah centric. It's not a Bible centric system. It's a system that was developed by Rome. And from Rome, it kind of, you know, splintered into several a- different areas, is what you find today, into different different sects, different uh, denominations, and all of that. So, that's what that is, and that's what Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26, is on about. So, if you're in Torah, you know, it's, it's an open road, it's a road of blessing, it's a road of long life. And you know you got to keep you got to keep up with it. You got to you give your tithes of the car. You got to give uh, you know you got to do the the festivals, the seven festivals, Passover, Tabernacles, you know all of those nice festivals. We've already done those. The next festival, by the way, is not biblical, not commanded, and is Hanukkah, which is going to turn up in a you know I guess whenever that is. You know I think it's Dece- December twelve. So. That's where you know. I guess that's a copy of Christmas in some way, and people people you know might agree or disagree, but uh, anyway, that's that's that basically. So having said that, we are are, are fast coming to uh, Hanukkah, uh, which is yet to be. Okay, so we we haven't you know we we haven't. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I do, I do do Hanukkah, by the way, but it's not a commanded festival. So if you don't want to do it, it's okay. There's nothing. There's no harm. And if you want to do it, there's no harm. It's just a little, little fun. That's all. So now let's talk about the system. Let's talk about the dynamics. So the dynamics of the system I just gave you was Christianity. And if you do not agree, and you know, I, I don't want to argue with you. If you want to stay in that system, ask yourself the question. Here's the question that you need to ask yourself. Read the first five books of your Bible. Which you all probably have it, okay? And I'm not talking about the hidden truths of breaks scrolls. You don't have to read my translation. You can read your own, you know, KJV, NKJV, all those translations out there. You can read those. And, and you can read them, and then you can tell me, are you doing the things that they say? Are you doing the first five books? Are you doing the Sabbath? Are you doing the festivals? Are you doing the things that it commands you? And I, I think that nine times out of ten, the answer is going to be no. You're not doing it. Most of you, those of you, those of you who call yourself Christian, nine times out of ten, you're not doing them. And therefore, you're not following the original instructions. I'm not talking about the original religion. There's no such thing. But there's the original way of life, or original instructions to Abraham. None of you are doing them. If none of you are doing them, and I'm talking about Torah people, I'm talking about those people who are not doing them. If you're not doing them then you can't say that you're in the right right place. You're in the wrong place. 
Therefore, you're not you're out of a place of blessing. You're gonna have problems. You're gonna have difficulties. Therefore, don't don't complain because you you're definitely in the wrong 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 path. Torah is not a religion. Torah is a way of life. If you're in the way of life, then God will make things easier for you. Okay. I've given you many tools and techniques to bless you, to bless you and to make your lives abundant. Okay. So with that, you know, I'm going to talk about them a little bit here. And that is, you know, as I said to you that when you go to bed at night, you imagine that you have $3 million in your account already, okay, already there. And now you're going to spend it. And, you know, before you kind of nod off to sleep, you're spending that money. Maybe you're spending some to buy a new iPhone 15 Pro Max. Maybe maybe you're buying a new laptop. Maybe you're buying a car, a house, all of that. I even put out a, if you, if you didn't get it, I put out a two recordings for public. One is how to manifest a house and one is how to manifest uh, a sum of money. Okay? Those two things are put out. And by all means, go to my channel on YouTube. And uh, if you don't have it, you can write to me at shimon63 at yahoo.com and I'll give it to you. Or you just go there and it's, pub- it's public. You know, it's there. It's there for you to do every day and get your house and get your, uh, uh, you know, sum of money that you desire. And you, you're away, away you go. So the other thing I said, if you want something seriously, then be, se- be serious about it. In other words, set your, set your intention, desire. If you want a car, if you want money, if you want, you know, $50 million in the bank, set your goal. Write about it. I told you to write it 30 times a day. 30 times before bed, 30 times when you wake up. And if 30 times is too much for you, I told you to write it 10 times. And if 10 times is even too much, write it 5 times. 5 times at night. Okay, and if day and, and day and night is too much, then just do it at night. You know, if, if <laughs> how, 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 how much can you cut it down? Eventually, somewhere you'll have to make a decision to do these things. And if you do these things, you know, I, I ask you to do it at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm not saying that you have to get up at 3 and then stay awake. You can get up at 3 and do it and then go to bed again. Or you can stay awake till 3, do it and then go to bed. I don't know, you know, depends on your routine. Depends on what your work hours are. However your work hours are, you work it around that. So if you're working in the job, if you have to go to a job at 9 o'clock, you wake up at 3, you know, you go to bed at, say, let's say 10 o'clock. And you wake up at 3 or 3 a.m. And you spend about maybe half an hour, 30 minutes. It won't take 30 minutes, but let's just say for argument's sake. By the time, you know, let's just say 15 minutes at least. And I'll give you 30 minutes. So you spend 30 minutes to write. So if you spend 30 minutes to write, it's 3.30. And if you go back to bed at 3.30, then you can wake up at, you know, 6 o'clock or whatever time you wake up. 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock to get ready to go to work. So that could be one schedule. And before you go to bed at night, if you went to bed at night at 9 o'clock, as some people do, you can write your affirmations at 9 o'clock, then go to sleep. So, you know, your last 15 minutes of your bedtime, you can keep the notepad by your beside, beside your bed, and you can just go to, do the notepad and then go to sleep. Wake up 3 o'clock, you don't even need to go into the kitchen. You just go to the bathroom, do your bathroom thing, Come back, do your notepad thing, and you're ready to go. Okay? So that's how easy it is to actually get this done. And if you're serious, those of you who are serious, you will be doing that. You will be doing that, and you will be getting your desire. This you know, this year or this coming year, you'll have your desire. You won't have to wait too long. You know, once you start writing, then within, you know, 90 days, you're ready to, you're ready to receive your desire. Within 90 days, three months. Three months you should write every day. And you should not stop. You should keep doing it until you get your desire. That's my advice. Do it every day without without rest. And do it till you, till you get your desire. If you can do that, there is nothing in the world that can stop you from getting your desire. If your desire is to, is, is to get married, you'll find a, a nice husband or stroke wife. If your desire is to you know, have a, a, a sum of money in the bank, you will get that. If your desire is to have a business, you will get that. If your desire is to get a, a better paying job, you will get that. Anything, anything. And I told you about robotic affirmations. 
robotic affirmations is when you take an affirmation like if an affirmation says I have million dollars in the bank I have a million dollars in the bank that's an affirmation and if you say that for, and I told you to say it for 15 minutes robotically 15 minutes I have I have a million dollars in my bank I have a million dollars in my bank I have a million dollars in my bank you say it for 15 minutes and you have four in an hour you have four 15 minutes you know four slots to make up an hour if you can spare yourself one hour if you can spare yourself one hour a day to do that you will definitely get your million dollars doesn't matter where it comes from God will decide how it comes to you and but it will come to you if you listen to me it will come to you okay so don't don't be disheartened don't be dismayed and don't say oh my color is black or my color is yellow I'm Chinese I don't know if I can make it yeah you can make it even if you're Chinese you can make it if you're Mexican so it doesn't matter what what color what height you have oh I'm a woman no you can still make it you can still be successful oh but you know I'm, my height is only I'm a man but my height is only five foot two inches you can still make it doesn't matter what your height is so don't allow any crutch don't allow any negativity and remove negativities from you and you can make it okay you will still make it so do that diligently do it with passion do it with belief belief is required I mean for the unseen you may not see your car right now parked in your driveway but if you continue to believe if you continue to see in your in your visualization that you have your car in your driveway already it's already there if you continue to see it and if you continue to say it and believe it then yes it will be there it will come it will come from wherever so this is why I want you to be diligent about it this is why this is this is why I've given you these tools and techniques to do that and not to not to you know not to be dismayed and not to be upset not to be sad uh, you know things don't work out for me they will work out for you I'm telling you they will work out for you but you really need to you really need to tell yourself that it will work but you really need to apply yourself so please apply yourself apply yourself because if your application is right the end product has to come the end product must come because you've applied yourself the result will be there so don't be dismayed don't be heartened, disheartened don't give up victors victors never give up okay never give up continue to do it continue to do it and you know this this goes for people looking for jobs same thing for the jobs robotic affirmation what's i given it to so many people to do it you know what's a, a robotic affirmation for a job i'm doing a you know you could you could be saying i'm doing a great I'm doing a great job with a nice salary. I'm, or you could just simply cut it down to, I have a nice job with a nice salary. I have a nice job with, and you can you can attach. You know, if you have a belief problem, some a lot of you will have belief problem. In other words, you're not willing to commit to a number. Like, don't you know? Some of you can just say nice salary, and who don't know what to write. And so you know, you can say I have a nice job with a nice salary. But those of you who know, you can actually put down a number. You can say I'm I'm making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. I'm making two hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a nice salary. I am making. You know, you can you can just repeat it. I am making two hundred thousand dollars a year. I am making two hundred thousand dollars a year. Robotically, you say it, and you will get that. By the way, so those of you who are willing to commit, and for those of you in pounds, not in dollars. You just switch that to to pounds, you know. You can say to yourself, "I'm making, you know, I'm making fifty thousand pounds a year. I'm making a hundred thousand pounds a year. I'm making a hundred thousand pounds a year." It's the same thing. You just got to just change it to pounds and euros. For euros, you change it to euros to the same amount. I'm making two hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand euros a year. I am making two hundred thousand dollar. Um, sorry, not dollar. I'm making two hundred thousand euros a year. <laughs> dollar keeps coming into my mouth because of being in America. So, if you're in America, you're in dollars. If you're in Canada, you're in dollars. So you could be, you could be, you know, saying, "I am making two hundred thousand dollar Canadian dollars." I am making two hundred thousand Canadian dollars for those in Canada, and that's a simple command. I am making two hundred Canadian 
or just you could you could forget about the Canadian. You could just say I'm making two hundred thousand dollars. That means it is your currency. I am making two hundred thousand dollars. I am making two hundred thousand dollars. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Fifteen minute segment. Fifteen minute for robotically for four 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 sessions of fifteen minutes is one hour. I want you to commit one hour a day, one hour a day of your life to prosperity, to abundance, to good life, to health, everything. When you have money, you can buy good supplements. By the way, in terms of supplements, in terms of supplements, you want to buy, I would encourage you to get a hydrogen machine. Hydrogen producing, brown hydrogen. It's, brown, it's called brown hydrogen. Get a brown hydrogen machine and you will reverse your diseases. It will cure all diseases by just inhaling oxygen. Uh, so oxygen, hydrogen. Because 62% of our bodies is hydrogen. Between 62 to 64%. 64% of our bodies are hydrogen and they need hydrogen. All our organs need it, cells need it. So what you're most often missing is hydrogen. Not vitamins, not some vitamins out there, no. Hydrogen. Vitamins is 2% of your body. But hydrogen is 64%. So 64% of your body needs hydrogen. Okay, if you can't afford the machine, because a machine is maybe, some of those machines are expensive that produce hydrogen water, or the ones that you can inhale, the inhaled machines that you need to inhale every day for 15 minutes is like expensive. Four thousand dollars, maybe not four thousand. Sorry, they're about six hundred dollars. Sometimes maybe a little bit more. So, let's say brown hydrogen. You know, you can buy it from AliExpress, and there are some other places. I think they they, they go around six hundred plus somewhere somewhere there. And the other alternative alternative is you can buy tablets even from Amazon. Amazon sells hydrogen tablets. If you are facing an illness then I want you to purchase the hydrogen tablets, put, you know, dissolve one in the morning in a glass of water, and then drink it on empty stomach. And that also produces hydrogen. It's a, it's a simple fix. So that's the alternative. You know, they sell you one month, two month supplies, and you can, you can do those. And by the way, uh, hydrogen, when your hydrogen uh, is filled, in other words, when you fill your deficiency, even it can heal your scars. You know, your body leaves scars. You can even heal scars. You know, if you're having other other area problems, you can you can heal, fix other area problems as well. It's really, really, it's like a magic formula. So hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Think hydrogen. You all need hydrogen. 64% of your body is hydrogen. Look at a hydrogen supplement. Look for one. And you, you can use that. If you cannot afford the machine at this point, then at least you know the machine might co- co- you know cost you 400 to 600 pound if you cannot afford it and if you can afford the machine my goodness you know you can be you can be sniffing that hydrogen every day it will change your entire life it will make you a new man new woman it's so good and if you if you say no i you know i don't have sufficient funds right now then that's okay then your tablets are pretty cheap you know they're not that expensive for maybe 30 30 30 dollars $35, somewhere there, you'll be able to purchase a month's supply from Amazon. Just just search hydrogen tablets and you'll find them. Okay, so uh, I'm going to kind of finish the lecture here and say have a wonderful Shabbat, have a wonderful next week, and until next time, Shalom Shalom to you.